grateful for all of you for being here tonight. And we always appreciate those who have joined us on live stream. It is good and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity. That's, that's so true. Amen. It's 133rd Psalm. And they're in that uh, environment where people are of one accord. That's where God commands the blessing. Amen even life forevermore. Yes. So it's, uh, we're part of a very wonderful uh, arrangement. This will be our 22nd message in this series on the New Covenant. I, I consider that this subject, the New Covenant, is one that over the years has become very obscure mm -hmm. to, uh, to professing Christians. I think I can see the reason for it. The, the, there's so much in the New Covenant, the devil has launched like a special yeah. attack against mm -hmm. this. And part of his attack is to make people think the New Covenant is a lot like the old, it just has a different set of commandments. Mm -hmm. And it might surprise you how many people actually think that. But a covenant in God's economy is the basis for God dealing with the people. Yeah. It is to God's purpose what a foundation is to a house. And so God can't do anything more. His nature will not allow him to do anything more than the covenant that he has with the people. Mm -hmm. it, it, that's, that's a, that is a, like a fence. Under the old covenant, he told the people, if you do everything I tell you, when I tell you to do it, and without any deviation, you weren't, you weren't allowed any kind of mistake or anything, ever. See, God couldn't, his nature wouldn't allow him to go beyond and bless people or accept people in spite of their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. You say, well, it looks like it's what he did. Well, he did that because he anticipated Christ. Christ died for the transgressions that were committed of yeah. old, see? Uh -huh. If it wasn't not for that, yes. coming in the future, Israel wouldn't have been accepted either. That's right. they, would, they wouldn't have remained God's people. It was in the strength Amen. of the coming Messiah yeah. because God's nature will not let him. That actually is a, is a very clumsy way of saying of saying it, like God is like, like under some kind of restraint, but mm -hmm. God, God will not violate his nature Amen. to bless somebody. Yep. Amen. Now you just kind of have to think about that. Mm -hmm. Now Paul uh, in our text in 2 Corinthians, he's dealing with the spiritual logic of the greatness of the glory. He's telling you about it that the old covenant glory of itself, it faded. You remember when Moses came down the mount with his face going? That was after he had had this contact yes. with God when the, when the terms of the covenant were developed by him. And his face, the glory in his face was like the glory of the old covenant. That's, that's what 2 Corinthians 3 is telling you. Yeah. It was really bright at first, mm. but it, it faded. I guess it did fade before, before long Israel had broken every commandment in the book. Yeah, that's right, yeah. right at the bottom of Mount Sinai. Uh -huh. Why did they do that? Mm -hmm. Because the covenant, old covenant, didn't have any strength. Yeah. Uh -huh. It didn't impart any aptitude. Right. See? It didn't make people capable. It just pointed out where they weren't sufficient. And that was by design. See, this is by design. Because God didn't send a savior till man knew he needed one. And it took a long time yes. to convince the human race of that. But it did happen. Now the principle that we're going to see here is that in God's economy, something made by God cannot simply pass away. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It only goes if something greater comes. You really got to see this is a principle of God's king. This applies to the heavens and the earth. Uh -huh, yeah. 
as well as to your old nature. Nothing old passes until something new comes. In fact, when the new comes, that's what pushes out yeah, amen. the old. The heavens and the earth. Way back in Isaiah, God announced, Isaiah 65, 17, Behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be a member and come into minds. That tells you something else. Yeah. That when God brings something new, it not only pushes the old out, yeah. it removes it from the consideration. Mm -hmm. yes. When the new heavens and new earth come, and they are going to come, yes. we won't be thinking about the old heavens That's right. and the old earth. We're not going to be rehearsing in heaven what we did here unless it's, unless it's what we did in, in a union with Christ. Amen. You won't be a member. See, you're, there's not going to be husbands and wives and parents and children. Right. I mean, there is no such thing in heaven. There's no such thing as this. Those are all earthly relationships. You know, people, I've, heard, I've had people tell me, I don't want to go to heaven if my wife's not there. You know, I've heard people say this. I understand it's because they didn't understand, but this has got to be cleared up to people. That all earthly associations, as precious as they are, now, yeah. no one's denigrating family. I mean, <laughs> I got a big family. I don't denigrate family yeah. at all, but it's purely the earth. It doesn't have anything at all that's transferable to the world to come. Yeah. Uh -huh. Nobody's going to be known in heaven for, what they, for the relationship they had here. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's not the way it's going to be. You should be able to reason out that that's a good thing. Yeah, that's right. There could be a lot of people in heaven that a lot of their relatives aren't there. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So what if you did remember them? See, so this is this is a mercy. Amen. But this is the way it is. Yeah. Peter said that uh, we, according to His promise, that's the promise I just read from Isaiah. 65 about new heavens and new earth. We according to the promise look for a new heavens and new earth. We're in drill of the righteousness. We're, we're <laughs> looking here doesn't, doesn't mean this. It's anticipating. Yeah, it's it's right. the idea. Anticipating. Yeah. We're anticipating an environment that doesn't have any unrighteousness. Yeah. Now, is not yeah. that a blessed consideration? Yes. Before the day passes, you'll have all kind of thoughts of dis disdain and sorrow because of unrighteousness that you've seen. Maybe in yourself or all around you. Mm. You aren't going to have any of that yes. in the world to come. Man's old nature, mm -hmm. what you are in Adam. See, there's two generations. Man, two generations. One is to Adam. One is to Christ. Christ didn't have any natural children. Right. Who shall declare his generation? That's what that's saying. That's what Isaiah was saying. He didn't have any. See, it looked like the, like the lineage stopped with yeah. Jesus. You could trace it all the way from Adam. Luke traces it from Adam all the way up to Jesus. And then tr it's, trun it's truncated in the flesh. It stopped with Christ. He didn't have any generation, any children. In the flesh. Yeah. But Isaiah went on to declare the generation. He said the barren has more children than the, than the married. That's so right. Jesus actually has more children than Adam. Yeah, amen. <laughs> you know, it's a, quite a thought, I'll tell yeah. you. Now, some people have thought that in heaven, just a, just a handful of folk are going to be in heaven. Well, this is just a delusion. Yeah. It's be a number that no man can number. There'll be more people in heaven than are in hell. Don't you doubt it for one minute. Amen. God is not going to be outdone by the devil. That's right. And numbers can be exponentially increased just That's right. suddenly. That's right. Great generations of people. That's right. And I think, I think this is happening right under our nose. The population of the world is, is increasing exponentially. It's almost at 7 billion. Uh -huh. And just a few years ago, it was 4 billion. So it's, it's exponentially, I think, God's getting ready when he covers the earth with the knowledge of the Lord as the earth's waters cover the sea. There's going to be a greater influx at the harvest yeah. than there was at the first fruit harvest, Amen. which was Pentecost. Yeah. Yeah. It was the first, the first ripe grains were plucked at the, at the 
first har at the beginning harvest, but the latter harvest is going to be greater. But it's going to be when the new, mm -hmm. when the new comes in, when newness of life spreads, mm -hmm. you'll see that it was greater than old life. Yeah. Yeah. It's greater. Yeah. And it happens in you personally. You are like a, a microcosm of a universe. You have a part that's traceable to Adam. It's, it's essentially in your body and everything connected with your body. That's traceable to Adam. But all, all that old nature, you've got to put it off. When the new comes, you take your old things you used to want, I stop wanting them. Yeah. You transfer it to the new man. When the new comes, the old goes. That's that's the principle. Put off the old man. Put on the new man, and it's in that order. It's in that order. You can only have as much of the new as you've made room for by putting off the old. Yeah. That's just the way it works. Uh -huh. Now the old covenant. Replace the new covenant. In that he says a new covenant, Hebrews 8.13. In that he says a new covenant, he's made the first old. <laughs> so it's going to going to fade out of the picture because a new has come. Now, our, the new covenant is better. Uh -huh. Any way you look at it, it's better. Hebrews 8.6 declares that. In that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. The sixth verse of that chapter says, Now he hath obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much better, by how much he also is a mediator of a better covenant, which is established, which was established about better promises. So what we have in Christ is better than what came by Moses. And you'd never want to forget this. I want to try my best to demonstrate this. What Jesus brought was better than what Moses brought. What Jesus revealed was greater than what was revealed to Moses. It was greater. Infinitely greater. For instance, the New Covenant provides remission Hebrews 10.18 reminds you of that, that the New Covenant provides remission. Now, where remission of sin, remission of these is, there's no more sacrifice for sin. So there's, the New Covenant has remission of sin. You know it's remission because no more sacrifice is required. See, as long as a sacrifice was required, there was no remission. As soon as a, as a satisfactory sacrifice was offered that took away sin, no more sacrifice. sacrifices, bloody sacrifices, stopped. Mm -hmm. So there was remission of the New Covenant. It wasn't under the Old Covenant. You could, thousands, hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of sacrifices were offered that didn't take away any sin, not even one sin, mm -hmm. let alone all sin. And the New Covenant, it provides a atonement, mm -hmm. an adequate payment that absolves the debt that sin creates. Through Christ we have now received the atonement, Romans 5.11 says. The atonement, at, at one meant. It means that the barrier that stood between God and man, like it doesn't exist anymore. It's not there. It's taken away. If you talk about men, he took sin away. If you talk about distinction of men, the middle wall of partition between Jew and Gentile was taken away. You, but you've got to see that to benefit from it. Mm -hmm. See? Got to see it. So if you can see it, God has no, God doesn't see sin from the standpoint of having to deal with it like he did before. Mm -hmm. Jesus took it away. In other words, God is free to bless yes, amen. whoever comes to him through Christ on the basis of his sacrifice. Do I, the New Covenant, it offers justification, mm -hmm. complete, complete yeah. justification. Acts 13.39 says, 
You are justified from all things mm -hmm. from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. If you had a, uh, a ledger uh -huh. and your, your indebtedness to God was listed in this ledger, which, it, which <laughs> when you come to Christ, there's nothing in that part of the ledger. Uh -huh. Your debts had been canceled. Or the old covenant didn't have anything like that. On the Day of Atonement, which was the high day for Israel, it was a high day once a year. After that, Hebrews 9 tells you that the, the high priest that offered all those sacrifices, his conscience was still defiled. Uh -huh. Old Testament saints couldn't forget the fact they sinned. That's right. Hundreds of years after Israel's sin, God's still bringing up their sin to the prophets. Hundreds of years, centuries pass. Yeah. And God, through the prophets, mentioned the sins they committed at Sinai, and the sins they committed in the wilderness, they weren't taken away. See? They weren't taken away. But the new covenant takes them away. And God doesn't, if your past is dragged before you, mm. it isn't God that did it. That's right. I'm talking to people in Christ now. Uh -huh. It isn't God that did it. You, you should be able to reason out yeah. <laughs> who did do it. That's right. As one of his fiery darts. Flaming arrows is, to, is for you to reach back and mourn your past. Uh -huh. If he can get you to do that, it'll separate you uh -huh. from God. And it provides reconciliation. A new covenant provides, uh -huh. um, see, we're talking about it has a greater glory. Uh -huh. It provides reconciliation. Yeah. Where we were enemies, Colossians 1.21 yeah. says we were enemies, but now we've been reconciled. Amen. That's more than just like a handshake. That's a move in the house reconciliation. Yeah, that's, huh? right. that's joined to the Lord reconciliation. That's one with Christ reconciliation, see? That's partakers of the divine nature Amen. participation. That's partakers of Christ. See, that, that's the kind of reconciliation we're talking about. And that, that happens under the new covenant. It, di it didn't happen even one time under the old covenant. And it provides the Holy Spirit. See, it's a more extensive... Right. Those in Christ, those that under Moses, they did they weren't given the Holy Spirit. That's right. In fact, any of the people they wanted something from God, they had to go to the high priest. No, uh -huh. no, no Israelite could like pray independently or offer sacrifices uh -huh. independently. They didn't have that. But in Christ, because your sons, Galatians four six says, because your sons, God has sent forth His Spirit into your hearts. Amen. Uh -huh crying Abba Father. That's, that's the central part of your person is your heart. That's the, that's the inner you. And he has sent his he didn't even give this to Moses. That's right. Not even Moses received this. The Holy the prophets didn't receive this. The Holy Spirit would move the prophet. They didn't have the indwelling spirit. Yeah, that's right. The spirit came on them. Uh -huh. But it didn't come in them. Yeah. I'm showing you the greater glory of the new covenant. And the new covenant provides access to God. We have access with confidence into this grace wherein we stand. See, you, you actually, not only can you approach God, you can do so confidently, and that's the meaning of the word boldly. Let's suppose boldly. Boldly doesn't mean brash. It means confidently, knowing you're received. No matter how weak you are, yeah. or no matter how what you may have done that you're seeking forgiveness for, it doesn't make any difference what it is. You can come boldly yeah. to the throne of grace, yeah. not just grace, all grace. You can come approach bold. See, the old covenant had nothing like that. Right. At the peak, at the peak of the day of atonement, uh -huh. the high priest didn't know whether he's going to die in the holy of holies or live. Yes. He's told, watch out when you come in here, do this, do that, or you, lest, you don't, lest you die. See, it was, the high priest didn't go into the Holy of Holies confidently. He had some bells, you remember, on the bottom of his robe? As long as those bells were tinkling, they knew everything was all right in there. But if they ever stopped tinkling, the tradition says they had a rope around his ankle. They'd, so they could pull them out because no one dared go in there. But see, the point is there was no confidence. When they come before God, there was no confidence. Yeah. 
You remember the men like Moses or David that say, Oh Lord, they plead for mercy before they presented their case. They'd ask for God not to be angry, be, be not angry, be, be patient with me. Remember when Abraham pled with the God? With God, he wasn't doing so boldly, yeah. from the standpoint of our text. That's right. He would he approached very cautiously, because he knew how holy God was and how unholy he was. See, all these saints they approached God with great caution. Read the prophets when they prayed to God. You'll see this. They were very cautious. Mm -hmm. But you're not. It, I understand the sense in which you were cautious. But that's that's as to the extent you you don't have faith. Uh -huh. If you have faith, you can come in. Yes, amen. The door is open. Yeah. That wasn't true under the old right. under the old covenant, and the new covenant it it brings hope. In fact, the new covenant is called hope. Yes. Hebrews seven nineteen says the old testament made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope. Uh -huh. That's the new covenant you talk about. It did. Amen. It brought hope. Hope is not. I, I hope. I hope something's out there. It isn't that. Yeah. Hope in the scripture is yeah. is knowing what the future holds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a it's an anchor yes. for the soul. The old covenant didn't have a hope. Mm -hmm. The only hope it had was the promise of a coming savior and that wasn't integral to the old covenant yeah that wasn't that wasn't part of the old covenant is independent that promise of a savior is traced back to abraham's faith not to the old covenant yeah, that's right. it was given to moses and the the law administered condemnation it's said that in second Corinthians 3 9 it's called the administration hmm. of condemnation what a what a phrase, the administration of condemnation. Do you know that God can administer, dole it out, condemnation? That's what the old covenant did. But the new covenant is an administration of righteousness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what 2 Corinthians 3, 9 says. It's the administration of righteousness. Here's what it means. The law diagnosed the new covenant provides That's right. yep. Yep. or equips. Uh -huh. Amen. See? So here comes the old covenant. It's like a, like a light, an inferior light. It shines on you and shows what's there. This uh -huh. is no good. Uh -huh. You're unworthy. Yeah. This is what the law tells you. The law will never say not bad. You've been doing pretty good. The law never says that. Yeah. It shines yeah. and it it says you, you're not up to it. Mm -hmm. You sin and come short of the glory of God. The new covenant shines, and with the glow comes equipping Amen. and provision. Amen. See, and with the glory comes endowment mm -hmm. and growth and advance. Better covenant. The old covenant illuminated sin. The new covenant illuminates God. Yeah. <laughs> see, see the difference? Oh, it's marvelous. Yes. The law did not have enough glory to reveal God appropriately. You could just like see the hem of his garment. That was, uh -huh. that's about it. Think of the, uh, of the light now that was associated with the old covenants found in Exodus 34, 6 to 7. You ought to be familiar with that text. Let me, let me read that to you. It's, uh, it's an epochal text that immediately preceded the giving of the Old Covenant to Moses. You excuse me while I, my memory failed me there for a minute. Exodus 34, 6. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, mm -hmm. merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, mm -hmm. keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, yeah. and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children under the third and fourth generation. Mm -hmm. 
That's what gave the glow to Moses' face. Uh -huh. yes. yeah. That was God's nature in embryo. Uh -huh. But let me remind you what was not in mm. that revelation. Mm. That was not a thorough revelation of God. That's right. yeah. There was no grace there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They remembered mercy. Grace wasn't, grace wasn't made known there. God's purpose, mm -hmm. it wasn't in there. Justification, mm -hmm. that wasn't in there. Mm -hmm. In fact, he said he could by no means acquit the guilty. Yeah, that's right. Sanctification, that, that wasn't in there. Mm -hmm. Cleansing, mm -hmm. that wasn't in there. Calling, uh -huh. that wasn't in there. The hope of glory, that wasn't in there. Mm -hmm. Access to God, yeah. no mention. Mm -hmm. Empowerment, mm -hmm. no mention. Direction, not included. Mm -hmm. Transformation, excluded. New creation, not mentioned. Glorification, not mentioned. An intercessor, no mention. Mm -hmm. A mediator, no mention. Being with the Lord forever, not mentioned. Mm -hmm. The overthrow of the wicked one, not mentioned. Salvation, not mentioned. Mm -hmm. See, I'm telling you, that was not a complete revelation of God. Uh -huh. It's all that could be shown at that That's time. Right. But you, <laughs> it doesn't touch the hem of the garment right. of what's been made known in Christ Jesus. Yeah. It's a greater glory. All of these things are included in the new All of them are expounded under the new None of them were expounded under the old. There were hints. There were hints. There was a foretelling the prophets would reach. They'd reach out into the future and point out that there was coming a day to be a great provision, but they didn't. They didn't provide the details. Amen. And, I, and the reason is because God could not. Mm -hmm. His nature wouldn't let Him provide the details of salvation yeah. till sin had been taken away. That's right. Amen. See, whatever the new covenant's going to replace has to go. Before the new covenant can come, the old's got to go. Yeah. Before the exceeding great and precious promises of God come, the old, right. it's got to go. When the glory of the new covenant began to proliferate, and it kind of, the glory of it kind of grew like a, like a sunrise, the old began to vanish away. Now that which is old decays and is ready to vanish away, is Romans 8.13. But the greater glory is what causes the passing. Tonight, if there's enough cl uh, clarity in the heavens, you'll be able to see the moon and some stars. Mm -hmm. But in the morning, yeah. when the sun comes up, the moon and the stars are still out there. Yeah. But the glory is gone. That's what happens. Yes. The law wasn't like obliterated, mm -hmm. and the law was the, was the words of the covenant, what it was called. Yeah. It wasn't obliterated, but the glory of it passed away. Yeah. Yeah. And if you, if you can see it, the Ten Commandments become promises. Amen. Mm -hmm. Under the law, you say, thou shalt not covet. See? In crisis, you will not cover. Amen. That's right. Newness of life will not. Well, actually, this is stated this way: that that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the spirit, mm -hmm. after the flesh, but after the spirit. Yeah. Romans eight one through four. So the, that the law, the righteousness that the law required, uh -huh. is still required, Amen. Yeah. but not by the law. Amen. Yeah. It's answered and fulfilled in Christ. Yes. So, the, so the character that's depicted in the law as something men did not have, mm -hmm. but something they needed to have, that is the very thing the saints of God live out. Amen. That's, right. that's why we can't see, we can't uh, uh -huh. accommodate ourselves to programs and plans yes. that deal with people like the law did. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. That's we right. can't. We can't accommodate that. Those are all in. If Moses' law, if Moses' law is obsolete, what do you think about the laws of men? Yeah, that's right. 
If the things that he told you to do, if they are not enforced anymore, mm -hmm. who would dare to draw up some new procedure? Yeah, that's right. See, it's more, it's more serious than people yeah, think. I, now, I, I confess to you mm -hmm. that I tend to be very crude when I'm dealing with this subject. Mm -hmm. It's not because I want to want to be. I just I see the repercussions of it. I know people are caught in the trap. They they don't want to <coughs> sin. Mm -hmm. I think the, I think the people that are following these programs they they really don't want to sin. They mm -hmm. But they don't realize what Christ has done, and evidently somebody's not telling them. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The new covenant has a greater glory. Yes. All moral programs, none excluded, mm -hmm. are after the manner of the old covenant. That's right. They're trying to get somebody mm -hmm. that's bent the wrong way, bent up straight. They all are the same. Doesn't make any difference who it is or where it happens. They're all the same. But see, by making the law obsolete, every law of regimentation mm -hmm. is obsolete. Yeah. It won't work. That's right. If it did work, the people that wrote the programs would be out of business in a short time. You'll be able to figure this out. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. If these things really worked. Mm -hmm the people would work themselves out of a job. Mm -hmm. But they don't work. That's right. Redemption does work. Amen. Redemption can take a Paul, the persecutor, and in one encounter, right. obliterate that sin. That's right. Amen. Never committed it another time. Yes. Amen. Take Peter, denied Christ three times a night, repented the very night, never did, never did again deny yes. Christ. Right. Never did. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. What did that? Mm. A greater glory did that. Amen. The law couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Now the law is good. Right? Scripture says it's good. Mm -hmm. It's spiritual. Mm -hmm. It's holy. But it does not impart power yes. to do what it requires. Amen. Now here comes the new covenant. Mm -hmm. And the new covenant brings the power along with it. Yes. You have the power it is God now that works in you both to will and to do. Yes. See, now, all right, right, you can have a will, I understand, to do what's right. Law can, the law can make you want to do what's right mm -hmm. by threatening to kill you. <laughs> but it can't give that do, yeah, that's right. will and to do. Mm -hmm. But the new covenant with the greater glory can do it. All of these things that I had mentioned grace and purpose and all that, they're all resident uh -huh. in the new covenant. They are it, they are part of the greater glory. Yes. That's what makes a new covenant better, is all of these things that are given. The greater glory includes us and what it includes. A change of nature. Yeah. Huh? That's what we offer people. Mm -hmm. Steeped in sin, slaves of sin, you could be a new creature. Amen. A change of nature. That's right. It brings with it a change of status. Mm -hmm. You were enemies, now you're reconciled. That's right. You were unclean, now you're washed. See? Mm -hmm. You were unaccepted, now you're accepted. A change of status. See, this is a greater glory. I'm describing the greater glory. It, there's a change of location. Mm -hmm. Now you're seated now, right now, tonight. You're seated with Christ in heavenly places. Yeah. That's a change of look. Now, exactly what is there up there that is missing? Yeah. Huh? Mm. He blesses with all mm. spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. See, nothing, the provisions of the new covenant, there is nothing missing. Amen. All the provisions are there. He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Second Peter 1 3. It's all there. None of it was there. In the, old the old covenant didn't have any resources. Mm -hmm. It just gave a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Many years ago, my, uh, my first wife was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease. 
But all they could do is diagnose it. Nobody could do anything about it. To this day, nobody can do anything about this disease. I've had two daughters that pass away of it too. Nobody can do anything. They can just diagnose it. We're thankful for the diagnosis. Don't make me wrong. It took a long time to get someone to diagnose it right. Mm -hmm. The law diagnoses. That's right. But it doesn't have any power to correct what it finds. <laughs> Everybody can see that, can't you? But it's amazing how you forget, at a moment of time, you forget that. Mm -hmm. At the very thing that shines a spotlight mm -hmm. on you, that in the new covenant you have, you actually possess in Christ what it takes to deal with that situation. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So if you've got a propensity towards something that you know you're, you're dissatisfied with and you know you shouldn't, mm -hmm. I suppose one would be like a propensity to exaggerate or something like this, and you're discontent with it, mm -hmm. you don't want to do it, and you find yourself confessing this thing quite often and you don't do it, and keep, keep doing that, don't, don't stop doing that. Mm -hmm. But know mm -hmm. that what you need yeah. to overcome that is actually available in Christ Jesus. Yes. You, you don't have to learn to live yes. with these things. Huh? Amen. You do not have to learn because the new covenant is better. Yes. It has a greater glory and it changes. It's always an upward. Mm -hmm. It's always an upward change. You don't change and it, it levels off, plateaus mm -hmm. off. The change is continual. Mm -hmm. You partake of the divine nature. You are steadily being changed by the Holy Spirit. See, it, the change, any change under the law, you had to make it. Any moral change, you had to make it. Right. But in Christ, you are changed. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit continues to change you from one increasing stage of glory to another. Yeah. And you're you're more and more being conformed to the image of God's Son by intention. This is by, by purpose. This isn't happenstance. Mm -hmm. This doesn't happen for some people that are in Christ. This is, this is the children's bread. Yes, amen. This is the children's bread. Earth loses its luster. Yeah. See? That's the secret to not being worldly. The world doesn't have an attraction to you. Amen. So if you've got this, maybe it's a career, you know. Uh -huh. Maybe it's a career. Maybe it's wealth. Maybe it's a real nice residence, or so. It's all kind of appeals that this world has. Yeah. But if you, in the new covenant, it causes the earth to lose its luster. It do, it doesn't look like it did before. Mm -hmm. And when the world announces what it can do for you, it doesn't sound as good anymore. Yeah. Now, heaven looms larger, yes. and the larger it is, the more confidence. See, it's a better. Amen. See, brother, it's a, it's a better. Yes. It's a better covenant. It, re, it really is. It's a better, yes. better Amen. covenant. And uh, I wish I had the ability to to say it better. I ask for grace regularly to do this because I know this is a. I knew what it took for me to see it. <laughs> I mean, is this? It seemed like one day it came all of a sudden, whoa, there it was, but it said, boy, you know, I went through a lot of waters to see it, and uh, I hope I haven't muddied the waters for you at all, but no. you ponder this, that the new covenant is better. Amen. Amen. Yes. It's better than anything else God ever did give to man. Yes. It's better. Michael here tonight? All right. Brother Aaron has our exhortation.